Listen, I promise you that Dr. Susan Hallman is going to be coming on the show, and she's on the air with us right now. Dr. Um, Hallman, wonderful woman. I've had her on the show before. She is the director of the Ph.D. program. I'll let her explain that in her own words here in a second from Divine Mercy University. And Divine Mercy University is one of those universities that you need to pay attention to, especially if you are wanting to get a, a valid education in psychology that is industry accepted, meaning these, this, the degrees that you get from the Divine University, uh, University are, are APA approved, the American Psychological Association. But it's also based in solid Catholic understanding of the human person, developing the whole person. So Dr. Hallman, welcome to the show. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for good morning. Good morning. Doctor, you know, I've got a ton of things that I want to ask you, but I want to get you involved in these calls. Can you help me with some of these calls that are coming in? Sure, absolutely. Okay, let's see if you got your uh, uh, therapist hat on properly today. Uh, Can somebody blend in? (laughs) (laughs) Can somebody blend in Nicole there so I don't accidentally hang up on her? There we go. Nicole from San Diego, you've been holding for a while. Hi, Nicole. Welcome to the show. What would you like to share with us? Hi, Phil. Um, My husband and I have been married six years, and we love each other very, very much. And we have a beautiful three-year-old daughter um, who has Down syndrome. And um, uh, I just want to get both of your advice, um, because we seem to be in this cycle. I I have all the responsibility in the marriage. So everything for the house, the bills, the mortgage, getting things fixed all falls on me. Everything for my daughter who has, you know, extra kind of educational and medical needs falls on me. And I just, um, I'm in this cycle of, um, and I work full time as well, as my my. husband does as well. And I just, I'm in this cycle of um, every, like asking my husband for help. And he's such a wonderful man, but I don't, I see it very clearly, very lovingly asking him, you know, I need help. I'm overwhelmed, right? And, uh, I know he loves me, but it's just getting that that help that I need, it doesn't really happen. And then it seems like every seven, eight, nine months, you know, my, I don't know, my tie-in gets fed up after a while of asking nicely. And then I blow up and I go, I need help. You know, I need, Mm -hmm. are you listening to me? I need help. And it's only at these times that I kind of get his attention. And then he kind of steps it up for, for a little bit. And then it kind of just wanes down again. And uh, mm-hmm. I just, so we I'm see, wondering maybe we do need to go to a therapist or. Yep. I have some thoughts on this, Nicole. I have some thoughts. I see some patterns here, but let me go to Dr. Hallman. Dr. Susan, uh, what, what would you like us to refer you as? Dr. Hallman or Susan? Oh, uh, Suzanne. That's okay. fine. Suzanne. Suzanne. That's, I'm comfortable with that. Yes. Okay. Dr. Suzanne, what do you think about Nicole's situation? You know, I think uh, it's difficult to know exactly what's going on, but it sounds to me like a classic communication disconnect. Um, And I know that may not sound very helpful if I say it like that. Um, But I wonder how he's experiencing um, your requests. You know, often we get so focused on the content of what we ask, we we lose sight of how it's received. And I think I think one suggestion I have at this point is to. Ask him perhaps what it's like when you ask, as opposed to only focusing on what, you know, how he responds to that. Does that make sense? Yeah, so how he's internalizing my request? How yeah, well, how, how I'm hearing it. You know, sometimes, yes, yeah. well, not you could be delivering it in the nicest way, but the way he hears it, perhaps based on other situations he's had in his life or maybe what's going on at work, you could be hearing it as, you could be hearing it in a different way from how you intend it. And so I think I would start there, just finding out what is it like when I ask, you know, what is it like for you when I ask you these things, which I don't think is unreasonable. Yeah. So you're asking, uh, Doctor, for Nicole to say to her husband, for example, listen, I just said this to you. How do you interpret that? What did you hear me say? Is that what you're mm-hmm. saying, Doctor? Right. Yeah. That is what I'm saying, because I think sometimes we assume we're all on the same page when actually maybe we're not. Right. Nicole, I have, I have one other, one other uh, direction in, independent of that, which is how do you feel, Nicole, when you're not in charge of things? How do you feel when you are not at the helm of the ship? 
Well, that's a good point. And maybe I have trouble releasing stuff. I don't know because I, uh, I don't know if he'll be able. Maybe when you say that, it makes me think. Well, maybe I'm not trusting him not a girl. really with the responsibility. Not a girl. Because and I, I think, like he and, doesn't know our daughter. Not a girl. And Nicole, li- listen to you, sweetie. You are a mother. You are working. You are, you love your husband. You have hands and, and, and your activity level is through the roof. And so I wonder possibly if, you're, if your husband who you love and he loves you just says, sweetie, I'm going to be standing over here because when I get, when I try to go and intervene, when I try to get involved, when I try to take care of our baby, when I try to do this or that or whatever, pay the bills, what do you do? You just... That's not the right way to do it. That's, you know, blah, 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 blah. So as a result of that, I just sit back in the sidelines until you build up to the point where you are exploding like a volcano. And then you say, help, help, help. And he's sitting right there on the edge, always wanting to help. But I'm not sure that you are very comfortable with letting go of some of these, some of the control, some of the, some of the reins, get letting go of the, of the helm, as they say. What are your thoughts on that, Nicole? I think you probably like hit something right on the head there because he he has ADHD too, and so when we were first together, I took over. It didn't start out with me immediately taking over all the bills, but I took on more and more because he would forget to make a payment, or he would. He's kind of uh, the ADHD. I think makes him a little bit disorganized, and so. I'm a project manager, so I'm very detailed, right. checklist, you know. So I think he probably hit something on the head there, yeah. and I think I need to trust. You know, and if something gets missed, you know, as long as it's not for GS medical or yeah. education, then that's fine. You know, and I think Dr. Suzanne said said something very important. So, you know, him asking you also maybe in the, in the presence of a therapist that can that can walk you through this to to say exactly what I did and have you be able to say that and have you be able to say, you know what, sweetie, I do like control. I do like to be involved, and so I realize that you know that. That threatens you. But also, you know, like when you say, Dr. Suzanne said, ask him, I just told you this. What do you feel about that? How did you interpret that? That's that whole underlying purpose that that Dr. Holman just talked about, which is let's find out how effective our communication is. Dr. Holman, any any other thoughts on that? No, no, just a quick anecdote. You know, I was working with a with a woman who complained about her husband not doing anything around the house, not not to this degree, but, but you know, and um, I said to her, well, you know, how about asking him to unpack the dishwasher? And she looked at me and she said, oh, no, I could never ask him to do that. He wouldn't do it the right way. Exactly. And so, you know, I I thought that was a great a great metaphor for, you know, so what if he, if he gets things not quite perfect? I, I think the more important thing is feeling supported even if people don't do things just how we would do them. And so I'm not saying that's the case with you guys. I don't know you, but but I just want to put that out there just to segue with what Phil said, that our expectations are not always things that other people can meet or feel that they can, and, and maybe that's a small part of this. Nicole, what a great call. Thank you, sister. I love the fact that you love your husband. I love the fact that you can feel his affection and love. I love the fact that you're mom to this daughter of yours i i have high hopes for you but absolutely let's get and start talking with somebody and sort this thing out so that it doesn't get uh into a negative place thank you that's very helpful yeah god bless you sister god bless you much love to you much love to you and your family thank you for calling here god bless you both thank you ah Gosh, you know, I mean, I, I'm not kidding you, Dr. Suzanne. If you could look at the at the phone lines, they just lit up. We have three or four people on that have already been screened because this topic is so pertinent to people. And I think about you, Dr. Holman, you know, coming from Divine Mercy University. I, first of all, let me pause and give us some background about Divine uh, Mercy University, uh, where you're coming from, what's your program about, et cetera. You know, we are located in um, Arlington, Virginia, about two miles from the Pentagon. And um, we, I see us as people who bridge the gap between uh, psychology and, and faith. And, you know, we know that 89% of Americans believe in God. 
and roughly one in five self-identifies being Catholic, and yet about 61% of psychologists um, don't show much of an interest in integrating what faith has to offer. And so at the Institute for the Psychological Sciences and Divine Mercy University, we have an online master's degree. We have a in-person uh, doctoral degree in clinical psychology that you can become a clinical psychologist with. Um, and we have a counseling degree that you can become a licensed uh, professional counselor with. Yep. And so um, we really are trying to bring faith into people's real lives, uh, but not at the expense or not in opposition to psychology and counseling. Yep. I, I think that's critical. Faith matters. 888-914-914. Give us a call. Talk to Dr. Holman directly. Um, we'll get back to some of the calls that are on hold. 888-914-9149. Advice and opinions heard on the Phil Sandoval Show are for educational purposes only. Now here's licensed marriage and family therapist, Phil Sandoval. Okay, welcome back from the break, everyone. Welcome to Immaculate Radio. We have Dr. Suzanne Hallman on the air with us. You may have recognized that wonderful voice of hers because I've had her on the air before. But Dr. Suzanne Hallman is um, the director of the Ph.D. program at Divine Mercy University. Um, Wonderful, wonderful program. And just before the break... Dr. Hallman was mentioning to us that what we tried to do is incorporate faith. That, Doctor, you gave some great statistics on how many people really have faith, uh, acknowledge in surveys that they that they believe in something greater than this earth, and I thought that was great. Before I get into more conversation with Dr. Hallman, though, I want to remind you that next year, which is going to be here before you know it, Easter is going to be here before you know it, Lent's going to be here before we know it, I'm sponsoring a trip to Italy. We're going to go to some of the most... Wonderful sites in Italy, Rome and Azizi and other places. Um, an 11-day trip beginning April 17th with Colette. And you can find out information about this trip um, at my website, ihradio.com slash phil. Um, there's lots of links there to find out about this trip. But take a break. Uh, we're going to have a great trip. That said, Dr. Holman, um, let's go to a call. How about that? So we have Sylvia calling. She's been holding for quite some time from San Diego. So, Su- Sylvia, I, I have Dr. S- uh, Suzanne Holliman on the air with us. What would you like to share with Suzanne and I? Hi. Hi. I'm just calling in regards to your previous caller, Jack, and the problems he's having with his wife's moods. Um, that was my life. <laughs> and I just wanted to share what I learned that, You know, I don't know if she went to the doctor to try and figure out why her moods are are so wild and everything. But for me, and I had never heard of this before I went through it, um, I medicated for 20 years on Lexapro for terrible irritability after having children. Um, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde irritability. Anything could set you off, and it would last, and it would take a long time. Going on Lexapro stopped all of that. And then in 2015, I was Mm -hmm. diagnosed with a sleep disorder called REM behavior disorder caused by SSRIs. So I had to to come off it. And after weaning off the Lexapro, um, all that irritability came back and the nightmare came back. Mm -hmm. And in 2016, Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with hyperparathyroidism because I was I had developed chronic fatigue on top of this irritability that was ruining my personal life, my relationship with my husband, my coworkers, because <laughs> anything could set you off. And just this last March, I went to Tampa General Hospital and had surgery by the doctors of Norman Parathyroid Sur- uh, Surgery Center, and they removed two benign parathyroid tumors. Mm-hmm. And Hyperparathyroidism causes uh, the fatigue and the irritability. Yeah, let me pause you there. Um, let me pause you there. Dr. Holman, what are your thoughts on this? Well, you know, I, first of all, I want, to, I want to really affirm the fact that you've been taking care of yourself uh, during all these years. A lot of people are not so good at that. And so I'm very glad that you've gone and consulted with the right people. 
Um, things do change. We change the, the way our bodies respond to medication changes over time. We discover health problems we haven't had before. Um, and, and we know that the thyroid has a very significant impact on mood. So I, I think you're on the right track. I think that's what I, what you know, I want to affirm at this point. Yeah, and, you know, for me, I think about, Sylvia, that a lot of times people don't know what's causing these problems, right? We don't know if it's a, if it's our chemical right. imbalance. We don't know if it's the children or, the, you know, what we call psychosocial stressors. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes we need to be... It needs to be pointed out. Our bad behavior needs to be pointed out sometimes, our difficult behavior. Um, Sylvia, was that useful to you when people would tell you, you know, mom or wife, you know, you're, you're behaving pretty erratically, you're, you're up and down, you're all over the place. Was that helpful or did anybody even try to tell you that while you were going through your difficulties? No, they kind of stayed away. I mean, I knew I knew, you know, I have a very strong Catholic faith and I know, and that's not Mm -hmm. who I was before I had children, before I got married. And I didn't want to be that way. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. At the worst of it, when I could not take anything to feel better because of the sleep disorder, which went away when I came off the SSRI, um, I would go to morning Mm -hmm. mass and um, I'd sit in church and I would, in my mind, I'd be raging at God. It's like, I don't want to, I can't live like this. You need to be my Lexapro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. oh, my gosh, it's it's been two and a half years. Um, and I'm still going to morning mass. And all what I learned with it was God wanted more of my time. Even though I was already praying the rosary mm-hmm. every day, he wanted more of my time. Yeah. And that <laughs> and, brought and that brought you peace, Sylvia, to 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 spend more time with Christ. That that brought you peace, that brought you some comfort. It took a while, but in my mind, mm-hmm. it's like I had nowhere else to turn. Mm. There was nothing else. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it weren't for my faith, I probably would have committed suicide to make it stop. It was so bad. Wow. It was so bad that mm-hmm. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And after surgery, that irritability went away. I'm waiting for the fatigue to go away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you mm-hmm. know, at least I don't mm-hmm. feel I've, I've had a, a like an 80% improvement in, in my mood. That's and a lot that. of that has to do with growing in my faith and going to daily mass. It's done Mm-hmm. tremendous mm-hmm. Yeah. good for mellowing me out. Sylvia, I wish but. we could talk to you for a long, long time because I want to ask about how your relationship changed and all that, but I'm, I'm going to pause because we only have a few more minutes left of the show, but I want to say thank you so much for sharing your, your story because your story gives people hope that we need to be patient sometimes yeah. and we need to understand that sometimes the medical community can't give us everything that we need and we need to incorporate everything that we can in order to find this peace that mm-hmm. we're looking for. Thank you for a message of, of hope, Sylvia. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much. God bless you, sister. Uh, Dr. Thank Hol- you, Sylvia. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, Dr. Holman, um, you know, I, I think that's exactly what Divine Mercy uh, is all about. It's what you said during... Uh, the mm-hmm. transition from the lab point that we we look at the whole person. Go ahead and talk about that. How how does the whole person get addressed in your programs? Well, you know, a lot of psychology programs and counseling programs look at biology. They look at psychology. They look at the social environment. We look at all of that, but we we add the importance of the spiritual dimension to that. And um, if you look at the September 11th attacks and all the other things that's going on around the world right now and in this country, um, you know, we find that approximately 75% of Americans turn to religion and spirituality to cope during very stressful times. And what we want to do is we want to train as many mental health professionals as we can to help people cope with adverse life events and stresses in their relationships, adding in what makes us unique as human beings, which is this spiritual um, predisposition, I think, that we all have, this existential search for meaning, but not at the expense of science and and solid research. And so I really am very proud of what we do here. Right. I I think you're right in the sense of you, you, your statistics that you gave. I just recently read that on the APA website. And yet, uh, the percentage of psychologists in 
surveys say that they don't believe in 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 faith necessarily so there's that that Mm -hmm. yeah that that gap right so you're going to a therapist that doesn't have a belief in faith a belief in god and yet you do and the vast majority of people do so to find good therapists that do have that incorporation of faith and science Mm -hmm. you are our phd you hold a phd there's a young lady that's on hold right now that i'm gonna get to in just a second she also holds a phd I tell people all the time that, in, okay. uh, you know, I come from a, uh, an engineering background. Uh, faith and mm-hmm. science are not mutually exclusive. In fact, we need to blend both of them together to get both the left and right brain. Do you agree with that, doctor? Oh, absolutely. I see absolutely no conflict between faith and science. I think from the very inception of the church, we have always done that. We may have forgotten at times, but but we've always done that. Yeah. Um, what can people expect, like if they're going to, I know you're in charge of the PhD program there at Divine uh, Mercy University, but what can people expect um, the process to look like if they were to go and apply to your programs? Um, well, I, the best thing to do would be to go to our website. Uh, you will find all the application materials you need there. And um, once we have what we need, we usually invite people for an on-site interview. For the, it's the PsyD program, actually. It's a doctor in, in clinical psychology. Okay. Um, and um, then, um, yeah, we, we will go through the admissions process. But we have a wonderful admissions team who will walk you through every single step of the way. It's really customized. It's really personalized. It's not... It's not like the really big universities where you get lost. You have an admissions counselor with you every step of the way. And you also have access to some of the faculty if you have more specific questions at any time during the admissions process. Yeah. So that's what it looks like for the PsyD. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I love that your programs are small and personal. Last time you were on, I said, I, were at, I was asking you about, you know, how your students are identified there. And in a small program like yours, relative to like Georgetown or some, you know, big, huge university, uh, you know everybody's name. You know everybody's story. Is that true yes. even in the in this ID you program? Really do. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely, yes, we know. That's what I like about working here. Yeah, I love it. I love your background. I love I love uh, the, the work that you're doing. You know, the data, like I'm in California, which is a pretty liberal organization. We have some professional organizations, mm-hmm. psychology professional therapy organizations and it's really tough sometimes to be able to get out and get beyond the political aspect of of what's you know what's in the mainstream and it's contradictory oftentimes to to our catholic faith at the surface because they present it like i can remember dr susan one time i was in grad school oops i'm running out of time here i'll tell you that story um another day but doctor i hope you'll come back on the program with us Hold on, because I have another doctor here. I have Dr. Jennifer Havey on the air with us, and I promised to do a public service announcement with her. So, Dr. Havey, go. What's our what What's our message? Oh, the message is, I love your show, Phil, by the way. I love that you guys are integrating science and faith, and that's what we're doing, too. We want to pray for people. We want the rosary rally. So just to remind you, St. Ignatius, come get prayer, come pray the rosary, and follow and honor our Blessed Mother. And when is that going to be? So we'll see you guys on Friday, 6 to 8 o'clock at St. Ignatius. If you want to start with Mass, we'll have Mass at 530. And guess what? Bishop Cotto will be there. Wow. And he will be giving a testimony of Our Lady of Fatima. Praise God. Anyway, that's Dr. Jennifer Havey talking. If you're in the Sacramento area, that's tomorrow. We also are going to say goodbye to Dr. Suzanne Hallman from Divine Mercy University. Dr. Hallman, we're so grateful that you're here. Thank you for that. Thank you so much for having me, Phil. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Okay, listeners, God willing, we'll talk to you tomorrow.